resist. Don't let yourself be destroyed as only one did. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> that was crazy. But if you have ever asked yourself the question, what is up with, with Star Wars, right? And why the, the conflict between Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker look a lot like the conflict between Thor and Odin, which looks a lot like the conflict between Katniss Everdeen and the, I don't know, the Capitol. Right? Why do all of these stories look so similar? And, and what's going on with modern cinema today and heroic storytelling and heroic storytelling techniques? So uh, this week is for you, right? This week is all about the hero's journey and modern cinematic storytelling techniques. And if you've never heard of the hero's journey, great, right? You will. Um, learn all about it. And if you have heard about it before, fantastic, right? This will be a great week for you to explore it in various new and hopefully interesting ways and maybe ask some questions that you have never had the chance to, to ask before and engage uh, your fellow students and myself in conversations over this. So um, today and this week is all about Joseph Campbell and Joseph Campbell's theory of the hero's journey oftentimes referred to as the monomyth, right? Um, now, the hero's journey is a series of, of steps, a sort of overarching storytelling structure um, that Joseph Campbell, who was um, a, a scholar and a writer, he sort of looked back at old classical mythology. We're talking about um, Hercules and Odysseus um, and some of those other Greek and Roman heroes, and even sort of extending far beyond classical Greek and Roman myths and looking at um, other cultures as well, and, and sort of juxtaposing all of them and sort of looking for what are some of the themes and trends that show up again and again and again when you're dealing with all of these hero myths. Because every culture, regardless of where they come from, um, usually has some sort of hero, right? Maybe they're a demigod, Maybe they're just a normal mortal human, um, but every, uh, every culture has a, a story system and within that mythological system, there are often these heroes that rise up and accomplish great things, right? So uh, Joseph Campbell looked at all of those things and he said, hey, they seem to follow this pattern, right? This, this series of events that occur over and over again across different cultures and across different tales and across different myths. And wouldn't it be great um, if America had its, sort of its own thing? And so um, Joseph Campbell's theories would eventually go on to become extremely popular within cinema, particularly cinema after Star Wars, right? Star Wars, um, George Lucas uh, read Joseph Campbell's theories and he thought, wow, what if I took some of these mythic ideas and incorporated them intentionally into my script 
um, and, uh, and uh, specifically intentionally across multiple films. And then what if through that experience, um, I, I create a, like a mythic world of my own. And it was of course wildly successful. And then a lot of people have done similar things since then, a lot of people. So um, today we're gonna be introducing you to sort of the basics. Now there's a lot of debate about Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey. Um, and a lot of the debate stems from the fact that even his own sort of text uh, has various contradictory elements about what exactly those events are and in what order do they come from. And so I'm gonna sort of strip all that down to sort of the basics and oh, on like a 12 o'clock scale, right? So I'm gonna do 12 different major events in the hero's journey that show up again and again and again, not just in mythology, but in modern cinema and in modern storytelling, particularly in the period that we are in now, the post-Star Wars, post-Iron Man, comic book, sci-fi, fantasy boom, right? In the escapist world, what is more powerful and significant than finding out that you're special and going to save the world and accomplishing sort of great tasks, right? Um, these this sort of structure is particularly attractive in today's day and age and shows up again and again and again. So we're gonna explore this over the course of 12 events. And as I go through these, I want you to begin thinking about, you know, what are the films or books or series or comics that you have seen or read um, that seem to borrow some of these ideas and seem to incorporate some of these storytelling beats, these various events within their um, stories. This week will be a great week to introduce and talk about some of those texts, particularly the more wild and unconventional ones, um, and and discuss about how debate, you know, is this, are they purposefully or intentionally incorporating Campbell's theories or are they doing something new or, or, or what have you, right? So um, let's let's get started. So we're going to start here at, at 12 o'clock with um, the status quo as I pull up my little chart here. Um, so number one, at the top of the hour, um, where we begin, and as you will note from the circular appearance here, where we will end, is status quo, right? At the start of every hero's story, they have to begin somewhere. They have to start in some place. We sometimes refer to this as the ordinary world, right? The everyday common existence. Every story starts with our hero, uh, be it a man or a woman, sort of going about their everyday task. And most of the time, that status quo is kind of uninteresting, boring even. Um, maybe it doesn't challenge them, or maybe they are a loser or an outcast within the status quo. But it's usually not comfortable. Well, it's usually comfortable, but not exciting, right? The status quo, the everyday existence, the ordinary world, our hero begins here. And it's not usually that long before the real story begins with the call to adventure. Now, maybe it's a literal call, right? If you think about Jason and the Argonauts, right? He is literally sort of called to a meeting of the town elders, and it's there that he jumps the river and loses his sandal and in doing so marks himself as the sort of chosen hero that's gonna set things right back in his hometown. Um, maybe it's a figurative call, right? Maybe they don't even have a choice in the matter. Oftentimes, according to Campbell, the hero will reject the call, at least initially, because it's, it's too uncomfortable, or maybe it's too dangerous, or maybe they, maybe they don't like their common everyday existence, but at least they know what to expect. You know, human beings fear change. Change is scary. And so the call to adventure is usually not something they want to leap into right away, but eventually they usually do. They have to, right, for the sake of the story. All right, number, uh, the next thing is supernatural aid. Uh, this is getting a little cramped, but that's okay. Supernatural aid usually comes in the form of a mentor of some type. Maybe it's a wise woman or man. Maybe it's some sort of spirit guide. Maybe it's some sort of um, friend that sort of rises to the challenge. But usually there's some sort of, of aid that appears, that pushes them across the threshold, which we'll talk about here in a second, and pushes them into accepting the call to adventure. So 
the wise person appears, the mentor figure. Um, if you're thinking about um, Star Wars, you probably are thinking of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, and suddenly, it's time for the journey to begin. We are going to cross the threshold. And enter the supernatural world. Sometimes referred to as the special world or the other world. Um, it's the place of adventure. It's a place where unconventional things happen to occur, right? It's far away from the ordinary world, the status quo that the hero is used to, and it will sort of provoke and push them into doing new things, testing themselves in ways that they have never done before. Crossing the threshold is usually particularly revelatory and significant. If you think about the Hunger Games, right, when Katniss Everdeen crosses onto gets on the train, heads towards the capital, right? It's a literal crossing the threshold. She crosses onto, mind the gap, the train, and then she sort of takes off and heads across the districts, and then there's a new world that she has never seen before, right? Luke Skywalker boards the Millennium Falcon, and there he goes across the stars into the great unknown, away from Tatooine um, and to a new land. All right, so crossing the threshold, very significant, and moves usually pretty quickly to the road of trials, right? And trials can take various forms. Usually, sometimes they happen right away. Like, while trying to cross the threshold, the hero may come up against something that they didn't anticipate. Maybe the trials are a little bit later, right? Um, but trials have to occur. It can't be easy in this special world, in the... Um, supernatural world. Things for the hero have to get hard, right? There has to be pushback by some sort of antagonist or antagonistic forces, right? It's not long before uh, Luke Skywalker jumps onto the Millennium Falcon where he comes across um, stormtroopers of various forms and, and finds his way onto the Death Star, right? Um, and here he faces foes unlike any that he has ever seen before. All right, next is the approach. So usually the hero will make it through the trials, right? But um, usually with some sort of aid, right? And the approach is usually where that happens. So the hero has encountered some sort of pushback, some sort of antagonistic forces. And so he or she needs help, right? They need to find some sort of allies to sort of back them up. Uh, for Luke, it's, it's Han Solo. For uh, Katniss, it's, it's, what is it, P Peter? Peter, I don't remember, um, but some of her sort of friends, Hamish, right? Um, but every hero has their own sort of set of allies. Usually, you cannot do it alone. Jason, of course, um, has his Argonauts, right? His group of, of heroes, right? Robin Hood has his Merry Men. Everyone finds their sort of allies, and together, they head towards the ordeal. This is the climax of the story, Six o'clock, right? We've made it, we are polar opposites. Things are at their most intense. Luke is facing down the Death Star or facing down Darth Vader himself, the incarnation of his greatest fears, right? And the hero must overcome the thing that they fear the most. Maybe it's a lie about themselves. Maybe it's um, an embodiment of some sort of negative social force, right? But some sort of ordeal is at its peak and things are the most dire. Sometimes the hero dies here, right? And is resurrected. Maybe the hero fails and has to sort of find some sort of new energy within themselves or a magical sword if you're thinking of the King Arthur myth, right? Um, but somehow, one way or the other, um, the hero overcomes the ordeal. This is usually later in the story and they achieve their reward. If you're thinking of Star Wars Episode Four, um, he gets his uh, medal, Justice for Chewie. If you're thinking of um, the Hunger Games, right? Katniss gets to like live and go back and she receives all sorts of uh, rewards from the capital, right? Every hero, when they overcome their greatest fear, um, must receive some sort of uh, reward for their fight, right? And after they receive their reward, they have to flee back towards the normal world, and it is here they do the magic flight. Now, for some stories, 
this is really quite easy, right? Maybe, uh, you know, they overcome their greatest foe and then they can sort of escape really quickly. Um, for some stories, the magic flight is like the story itself. They overcome their foe and now things get even harder as they try and make it back to where they came from. Uh, maybe in some stories, uh, it's about returning home and how hard that is when you have done so many daunting things, right? But whatever occurs, right, they have to return. And so here they fly back home and they return home. Now, return is when they make it back to the normal world. They cross that threshold back into the ordinary world and they see what they have what, what they have missed, right? Um, and it is during this time that sometimes they have to sort of re, re, uh, like reclaim what they have lost or what we sometimes call the resurrection, right? Um, oftentimes our heroes lose in the hero's journey, right? Sometimes the, the toll on the hero is so intense that they can't even survive and they have to be reclaimed from the brink, right? Um, if I'm, I'm thinking of, and this is spoilers for uh, the most recent Star Wars film, right? Um, Rey almost, like, she literally dies at the end of that movie and then is resurrected very quickly after that, right? Sorry. Um, but usually the toll on the hero is so intense that there, something is lost and has to be reclaimed. And then finally, we have resolution. They have overcome their great fear. They have returned from the ordinary world. They have returned home, but maybe things aren't quite the same. Maybe they are now kings or queens of their kingdom. I'm thinking of the end of the Chronicles of Narnia, right? Now they sort of sit on the thrones of Narnia themselves, right? Lucy now oversees the realm, right? Um, Luke Skywalker now gets to institute his own sort of new order after he defeats the Empire at the end of the Star Wars films, right? But some sort of resolution has to occur. Maybe it's a personal resolution. Maybe it's a global resolution. But they have to return back to where they started and sort of recapture the things that they have lost and sort of re-enter the world, right? And, and resume the status quo. But maybe the status quo is elevated in some sort of interesting or provocative way. Um, this is Joseph Campbell's the hero's journey. Twelve major events, status quo, call to adventure, supernatural aid, crossing the threshold, trials, approach, ordeal, reward, flight, return, resurrection, and resolution. Each event challenging and unique. And Campbell says again and again and again in, in Hercules' myth, in um, Jason's myth, right? In the Thucydides, what, what, name your culture, right? This shows up again and again and again, and it's there for a reason, right? Uh, Campbell, at the end of his book, um, sort of reflects on the fact that this echoes our own life in interesting and provocative ways, right? We all are sort of pushed outside of ourselves. We have to face things that we've never faced before. And if we overcome those things, you know, perhaps we can attain a physical reward, or maybe we perhaps attain some sort of spiritual or transcendental reward, right? Maybe we can now see the world in a new way that we haven't seen before. And it's by our own sort of cyclic journey around the hero's journey, right? Our own sort of pushing outside ourselves and then coming back to where we were at the beginning that we sort of achieve our own goals and dreams and ambitions and desires, right? So, that's the hero's journey, at least in a nutshell, a little bit simplified, but hopefully makes sense. Uh, this week, we are going to explore the hero's journey across a couple of different um, films and essays and various other ideas. And hopefully your mind is already spinning about the possibilities and the places you've seen this before. And I look forward to participating with you and going along that journey with you and encouraging some great discussion. Thank you, and I'll see you online.